This is quite an interesting device. It's a lamp that doubles up as an emergency light and uh, it came off eBay. Uh, well, it, this one actually came directly from China, but they, you can get them on eBay if you do a search for Intelligent Emergency Light E27. And uh, you can get them in cold, white or warm white and fierce power ratings apparently. However, the idea is that uh, you screw this into the lamp holder in the room and it, in normal use it lights up and it also charges an internal battery. And the internal battery, uh, let's see if I can just hike this out here. In this case, the internal battery is a full-size 18650 cell, sort of wedged up the back. I put tape over that because I was uh, exploring the connections in that earlier on. And it's got a capacitive dropper on the, the lamp itself, which limits the current through the LEDs. And the idea is, uh, you'll see incidentally there's little links across some of these dead LEDs, I'll, I'll explain that later. But the idea is that it charges in normal use, and then when there's a power cut, if you leave it in the lamp holder, then as long as the switch is turned on for that lamp holder, it will then light up like this in under emergency power from the internal battery. And the way it does that, it detects the fact that, you know, other loads in the house will actually provide a sort of path for current when that switch is on at the wall. So in the standby state when it's unpowered, it's putting a small... DC voltage across these connections and then when it's bridged by even a fairly high resistance it makes it light up. So let's take a look at the schematic because I have completely reverse engineered, excuse all the explosions in the background, there is a show running at the moment. Uh, so it starts off the capacitive dropper, fairly standard arrangement, a rather large 1.3 microfarad capacitor with a 470k resistor across it. That's uh, this capacitor here with a, a little tiny surface mount resistor across the back of it for discharge it. The, it goes through a bridge rectifier, uh, then a smoothing capacitor, which is uh, tucked in the back here, and that gave a little bit of a problem. It's 4.7 microfarad, 400 volt. I suppose I should write that down. 4.7 microfarad, 4.7 microfarad, 400 volt. And uh, <coughs> that actually gave a slight problem early on because there was a dry joint in the circuit board and it... Uh, went open circuit um, on one of these connections. And when that happened, uh, when I pl plugged the lamp in, because there was nothing to absorb the current surge coming through this capacitor, it actually blew some of the LEDs. But, so that's why some of the LEDs are sort of faulty and linked out. <coughs> I've, when I noticed that that was, had happened, I just resoldered it and that solved the problem. Across that, now I'm not sure if this is a standard diode, this little red diode, if it's a standard diode or a zener. But, uh, it's in series with a 150k resistor and I'm not 100% sure this arrangement. It, it looks like it's designed to discharge the capacitor in a way. It can't be because the diodes point in the wrong direction. It's, it's odd. I'm not 100% sure why that's like that. Then it's got the classics of 200 ohm resistors in series, which seems very common uh, in these lights. And then it's got the string of LEDs. But interestingly, it's got the standard string of 16 LEDs uh, that run normally off the main supply. But then it's also got six LEDs in parallel. I've just drawn five here that are run off the low voltage battery power supply. And effectively there's a tap taken two LEDs from the bottom, which is about six volts. And it goes through a diode and it's used to charge the, um, it's used to charge the lithium cell here. Uh, which has a protection circuit in series with it uh, and it's a fairly standard, it's an XB5350 type chip I think that's the closest I could find to it uh, and um, that uh, is the basics, that's the basically lamp and charging circuit then comes the electronics used to switch it on and this is a, it appears as far as I can see, just from the schematic, I've not actually checked what M6, I, I just wrote these numbers in recently because I, I was just doing a wee bit more exploration, I haven't investigated these numbers yet. But the way it looks, it's a, a PNP transistor, NPN transistor, and a PNP transistor here. And if this transistor uh, is effectively, because it's a PNP transistor and it's going up to the positive rail, it would be pulled uh, negative to turn it on. And that's how it's turned on when the lamp is off. If this is alive and neutral, the neutral is reference to the battery negative with a one mega ohm resistor. The live is uh, going through uh, limited, current limited to these resistors. And if you bridge the uh, live to neutral, then current will flow uh, through these two resistors and through one mega ohm and it will find a route to the negative rail and it will turn that transistor on. When it does, 
That then turns this transistor on. It looks like an NPN transistor, but there's no sort of base uh, resistor, which I'm wondering if it's just because that one's not going to pass much current. And then that one is then used to turn on a much higher current PNP style transistor, which then brings on the LEDs via these two current limiting uh, 4.3 ohm resistors, but there's two in parallel, so that's going to be 2.15 ohms um, if equivalent. <coughs> and the, the way it stops at lighting, when you, the way it stops that circuit being activated when you plug it into the mains is because I'm guessing that ultimately this capacitor here is going to be charged, because there are two limiting resistors, but one's bridge of the diode, it's giving it a non-symmetrical sort of AC waveform, I'm guessing, with a bias towards the positive side, which means that capacitor charges up to about 27 volts um, with respect to the battery negative, and that is effectively stopping this transistor from being uh, biased on while that's plugged in. At least that's, uh, that's what I can suss from this. It's quite an unusual little circuit. Uh, I did measure the voltage. It was about 27 volts. I, I wondered if that would go a lot higher, given it's just a tiny little capacitor, but... Um, yeah, so it's a neat little light. It works quite well. Um, I've been bridging out the dead LEDs uh, to get it back up and running again. And it does say that it will recharge in about uh, between four and six hours. But in reality, the current flowing through the LEDs in the first section of the circuit is about 80 milliamps. And uh, given that it's supposedly a 2.2 ampere battery, that's going to be that's going to be over 20 hours before it fully charges at that that rate. Another thing that uh, I thought was quite interesting, one of the LEDs didn't light it initially and uh, and it turns out that that's that LED which doesn't light because its current is effectively being shunted through to charge the battery um, and it uh, means that the voltage across that won't exceed about say at the best 4.8 volts just as the battery comes up to uh, the top of charge 4.2 plus the diode forward drop. Uh, so these LEDs don't light but uh, supposedly when uh, actually, I, I unplugged the battery just to see what would happen, and, and when you unplug the battery... Uh, they, <coughs> they, okay, they all, uh, they all light up, So, but only the other LEDs uh, only light up but once, the, once the battery is fully charged. So yeah, it's quite an interesting um, little circuit. Um, yes, indeed, it's quite a nice light. I might get some more because they're quite novel.